chat video. Basically what I'm going to do in these videos is eat cookies and chat about a certain topic. Sounds fun, right? Today I've got these super adorable Easter Bunny cookies and I'm going to talk about my experiences in the English 100 class at university. I'd gotten a request quite a while ago to speak about my experience in this class and I thought what better time to do it than uh, when I'm almost done university for my first year. So without further ado, let's begin. So I've made a list of several tips to talk about that I think really helped me in the class and might really help you. Um, now in high school, English 100 always seemed like a very terrifying class. My high school teachers said it was awful. <laughs> Some of my friends who had graduated already said they hated it very much. Um, people said it's designed to make you fail and like most people have to take it two or three times. I had a really good experience in the class and uh, maybe I'll be able to help everyone else have a good experience with a few tips of mine. Tip number one is to read the readings. Yes, a lot of people think you can get away without doing it and you can. Yeah, I admit there's probably one or two that I didn't do, but it's so much easier when you do the readings. You learn about grammar, you know what you're talking about when you're discussing a story which really helps you understand like okay you're talking about the symbolism in the blah 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 story but you didn't read it so like you're not going to get the full effect and you're not going to learn from the class which is your goal going to university. Now my second tip is to show up for class. Living on campus showing up for class was like really easy. I was there. I had no excuse to skip. Um, and also English classes are generally smaller because they're more discussion based and you need more attention with each student kind of one on one and my professor actually took attendance into account when grading us I think it was worth 10% of our final grade and I showed up for every class so I think that's what helped me get my 95 um, those are easy marks you don't even have to do anything like you can show up and take a nap you'll still be marked present so that's one of the basic things you can do no matter how good you are at writing or talking or reading all you need to do is show up. My third tip is to ask for help. I did this with my second essay. Our first essay was just an in-class one so I couldn't really have the opportunity to get help but I went and I asked my professor and he actually flagged a lot of things that would have lost me a lot of marks and I think that's why I did so well on my first essay and um, it's not cheating it's not taking the easy road because I learned what I was doing wrong and I fixed that so I was able to show him like oh yes I can do this right and that's what they grade you on can you do what you're supposed to do right and I also went to a writing tutor for my third essay um, of course then I had so many tips from my professor from the other time I didn't really need as much help but I still was able to clean up some things that helped me get some extra points my fourth tip is to know your strengths and to know your weaknesses um, ask questions about your weaknesses like ask oh how do you introduce a quote that was something that I struggled with but uh, if you know you're really good at introductions just make sure you spend a lot of time on perfecting that part just to get the maximum points that you can in that area. Number five, <laughs> participate. Now my professor didn't mark for participation, which is probably good because I'm generally quiet, but I think if they say they're marking it then I'm a little more motivated to do it. But I think you get more out of the class if you ask questions and you get personal help on what you need. Now I'm going to go into what they look for in an English 100 essay and what to make sure that you're really perfecting and you're really focusing on. The first thing I struggled with is cliches. Now a cliche is defined as something that's overdone, lacking original thought, and that's what they want in your essay. They want you to think critically, that's the main point. You gotta be critical of everything, then you get full points, real easy. Honestly, I don't even realize I use cliches in day-to-day -day life, but I do. <laughs> um, for example, in one of my essays I wrote, uh, I forget what the character's name was, but oh, I think it was the old man in the story. I said, the old man holds the whole place together. Now, in common language, we all understand what that means. But when you really think about it, that's not normal. That's like an idiom or something. Um, so you just gotta watch for those things because a lot of cliches, like, you might think it just makes it sound fancier, that it adds a little pizzazz to your essay, but then in the end, 
you're just losing points. So um, a good thing you can do is look up your little quote that you're questioning or if you see it doesn't have a literal meaning or doesn't make straight sense, then uh, maybe consider rephrasing or even asking your professor because there's a lot of cliches like ace up his sleeve, Achilles heel, these things aren't straight English, they're kind of like not fancy but you know what I mean, they're like made up. Another thing you want to be careful of is topic sentences. Professors love those things, if you have one even if the rest of your paragraph is crap, you'll at least get points there. Be aware and make sure that you're always using the present tense unless instructed otherwise in an English 100 essay. Um, the reason is when you're writing about literature they want you to use present tense because every time you open the story it starts all over again and that's kind of the logic behind it so just make sure you're staying away from past tense of course there's exceptions like if something happened before something else in the story you have to use past tense but you can clarify that with your professors um, just make sure everything is present tense and you'll get full points Make sure you know what MLA is and how you're doing it. If you have any doubts, look it up in a book or uh, go online. It's actually pretty easy once you get the hang of it. And you can even go to like sites like Citation Machine and they'll do your whole citation right for you on the site. Make sure you're introducing your quotes properly and you're not just sticking them in your paragraphs. <laughs> That's what I did at first. But then you have to kind of phrase it differently than you would with a research essay. And it's really interesting to think about how crazy different research and English essays are and uh, you just gotta be aware how to quote things in each specific subject. And the last thing I advise you to do, even if you're not instructed by your instructor, add some scholarly sources to your essays. Professors will be impressed, you're gonna have to do it at some point anyway, so you may as well learn how. I was really scared at first, I was looking on the internet and not finding anything, but then I went on my university's library's website and uh, it was really easy to find and I found a few. They had to like borrow them from China though, so make sure you're doing it ahead of time. So that's my advice for the English 100 class. Please leave your comments and questions below. Um, I mean, you can leave your advice if you want to, but like I'm already done the class and I don't plan on retaking it anytime soon. Uh, but yeah, um, definitely let me know what you think and make sure to subscribe and like this video for more fun adventures.